Hey, Chad Carter here with ChadCarter.net and LearnHallLens.com. And today I want to talk to you about spatial mapping and a component that's built directly into Unity. Uh, now I didn't realize this was even in Unity uh, until I saw the talk by Mr. Rodriguez here on uh, during the .NET Conf. I just talked about the .NET Conf and the .NET framework in general last week. So if you've not seen that, uh, go through a whole sort of history of the .NET framework. Uh, so you might be interested in seeing that. And I'll have a link to that video at the end of this one and also in the description. But when I was watching uh, this talk from the .NET conference, I noticed here that he brought in a spatial mapping, uh, not the prefab. I usually bring in the spatial mapping prefab from the Hollow Toolkit. But this was something that was actually built into Unity itself. And, my and so right here it is. So you see he brings in the spatial mapping collider and spatial mapping renderer. And I thought, well, that's not how I've done it. And I didn't realize that was even there. And in fact, uh, just last week, I did a webinar talking about spatial mapping. I have another one uh, coming out here uh, soon. So I wanted to try this out and see uh, what's different about it, what's the same. And uh, so anyway, I just created a, a quick uh, test. I was originally working on uh, 2017 uh, version 2 but that still isn't working for the uh, HoloLens. So if you want to deploy stuff on the HoloLens, you still need to be in 2017.1 or you can be in Unity 5.6. But here I just created a little guy called uh, SM for Spatial Mapping and I brought in the Spatial Mapping Collider and the Spatial Mapping Renderer. And I did that just by simply um, searching for Spatial Mapping. And you'll see right here, part of Unity is a Spatial Mapping Collider and spatial mapping renderer. And if you don't care about objects colliding with your spatial mapping, then you don't even need to bring in that component. Um, if you only care about the stuff rendering, then you just bring in the renderer. And you'll notice I have vi visualization selected as the render state, and that gives you the wireframe because that's what the visualization material is, the wireframe. And uh, that's kind of, if you've seen any of my demos in the past, that's definitely what I've used is the spatial mapping uh, wireframe. And the occlusion is the actual uh, material that makes it so, let's say, uh, well, I've done like the bouncing ball, whatever, that rolls behind the couch that you won't see it because it's being occluded by the real world. And that's how that works, is by using that material. Um, and so when you're trying to actually deploy something for real, you would have your render state as occlusion and let it use that occlusion material. Um, if you wanted to put some kind of a grid over the real world, then you could change the material. It doesn't really matter what you pick, visualization or occlusion, but the point is that you would actually pick, uh, change your material for whichever one that you're going to tell it to render on uh, to one or the other. So a lot is the same. However, I'm still going to prefer using the Hollow Toolkit spatial mapping. So this is the Hollow Toolkit spatial mapping. And when I would bring this guy in, and the reason why I would prefer him currently over what's built into Unity is really because of this object surface observer. And it's just so I can actually work with the spatial mapping data inside of the Unity editor itself. Because here I can pick a room model, like S SR mesh, for example. And then when I played, so let me go here to this spatial and I'll just, um, take him off, disable him, back to spatial mapping, uh, hit play here, and we'll actually see the room shows up, right? So there's there's our room, and of course the ball was interacting with it, and then it fell. Um, but without having this object surface observer script with this, uh, you know, temporary or test uh, object of the room, then you won't be able to play with this and see how your code's going to work with the spatial mapping data inside of Unity. Because here in the actual, let me delete that. Here in the actual um, components from Unity, I did not see a way to test a particular um, object, a particular room. So I'll even try to bring up um, Observer, the 
object surface observer and bring in you know SR mesh for example and play and it's just not going to bring up the room so and again there may be something else to do there there might be something I'm missing maybe it's a whole other um, whole other script or something but I didn't see it so until I um, figure out oh no other way to do that I will still be using the hollow toolkits spatial mapping prefab over the built-in uh, spatial mapping collider and renderer uh, that's inside of unity because the expectation is these would also work I'm assuming they would work with AR kit and AR core uh, would be my guess now I actually deployed uh, this app to the hall lens and uh, you'll see the spatial uh, mapping data where I originally had it here as visualization and with the actual components here from unity so I actually had these components from unity this is what I deployed and you know it actually works so these components work the only downside like I said is that there's no way to test it inside the editor that I saw reset and we have the bouncing ball falling so again everything here works works well um, so if you don't have a desire or a need uh, to be able to test this in the editor then you might want to use the spatial mapping collider and the spatial mapping renderer components directly from unity again for now anytime I'm doing this I'll still be using the prefab here that's part of the hollow toolkit Anyway, that's really all I had uh, today. Again, if you're interested in seeing uh, the talk about the immersive uh, headset, Windows Mixed Reality at 90 uh, frames per second, definitely check out uh, this talk here. Um, it's a uh, .NET Conf that happened a couple weeks ago now, and you can find all those videos on Channel 9. If you're interested in hearing my history with the .NET framework, uh, then definitely check out uh, my last week's video. All right, well, I hope you have a fantastic week. Now, see you in the next video.